In this lecture, we begin our discussion on electric circuits. Now, electric circuits are very important in everyday life, and almost any type of electronic device contains electric circuits. For example, take your phone for instance, something you use every single day. Now, the reason my phone works the way it does is because of electric circuits. The reason that my phone is functioning right now without being plugged in into an outside source, outside power source, like an outlet, is because of electric circuits. And specifically, it's because of capacitors that store energy in the form of electric charge. Because of capacitors which are found in electric circuits, my phone responds when I press this button, my phone lights up. That's because of our capacitors found on our electric circuit. Now, we already spoke briefly about electric circuits, and we spoke about three important details or components of electric circuits. We spoke about resistors, we spoke about capacitors, and we spoke about voltages. Now, these three guys can be mixed and matched and combined in many different ways on our electric circuit. And in this lecture, we're going to examine the results produced when you make certain combinations of these three components. Now, let's first see how these guys are represented in terms of symbols on our electric circuit. Resistors have the following symbol. Capacitors have this symbol, or parallel plate capacitors, and voltages have the following symbol, where the long line represents a positive cathode, and a short line represents our negative anode. So voltages are simply batteries. And here's one example of an electric circuit that contains one battery, one resistor, and one capacitor. So, now let's zoom in and let's specifically look at resistors that are placed in series, that are placed adjacent to one another. Now, if we draw resistors in series, let's say we draw two resistors in series, this is what we will get. Suppose we have some voltage, we have some battery, and our two resistors are in series. So resistor 1 is a light bulb, and resistor 2 is also that same light bulb. Now. <coughs> I want to ask the following question. What is the total R of our system? In other words, how would I find my total resistance of this electric circuit? Well, let's examine it using a Kirchhoff's first rule. According to Kirchhoff's first rule, any current going into any node, such as this node, must equal the current coming out of that node in that circuit. So in this system, what Kirchhoff's first rule states is the following. The electric current that is produced on this side leaves and enters this node, and that current is equal in magnitude to the current that leaves this node. In other words, the electric current that travels through this resistor and through this resistor must be the same. If they weren't, that means charge is not conserved, and that would be a violation of the conservation of mass and the conservation of charge, which is obviously not true. So, this must be true, that the current coming in equals the current coming out. So, let's use the following Ohm's law. Remember, Ohm's law states that the voltage of our system is equal to the current times the resistance. So, I want to ask the following question. What is the voltage that is produced across this resistor, and what is the voltage produced across this resistor? Well, let's represent our voltage on this guy in terms of V1. So V1 is equal to the current that enters our resistor times the resistance of our light bulb. And in the same way, we can find our voltage of resistor 2, across resistor 2. Voltage 2 is equal to the same current, remember, current is conserved. Whatever goes into this guy leaves this guy, and that means that same current enters this light bulb. So, we have the same current times resistor 2. So, to find the V total, to find the total voltage, we simply add these two guys up. So, I, let's add these two guys up. V total is equal to V1 plus V2. Subbing these guys should give us back our V total, our voltage of our battery. Okay? So now let's represent these V1 and V2 in terms of these currents and these resistance. So 
I times R1 plus I times R2. And now we notice that each term, each of these terms, contains an I. So let's take the I out. So we get our V total is equal to I in parentheses multiplied by R1 plus R2. So we see that our resistance or total resistance of our system when our resistors are in series or adjacent to one another, our R total is simply R1 plus R2. And that tells the following. Whenever you have two or more resistors in series to find the total resistance, we simply add up our resistors. So R1 plus R2 equals R total in this case. So we just saw how to calculate our resistance of our circuit if our resistors are placed in series. Now let's examine what happens or how to calculate our total resistance when we place our resistors in parallel to one another. So let's look at the following example of a circuit. In this, in this circuit, we have two resistors, R1 and R2. And these resistors are placed in parallel or across from one another. And we only have one battery with a voltage or electromotive force of V total. And this battery propels our electrons forward. It allows our electrons to flow from the anode to our cathode. So our electron flow is in this direction. And that means by convention our current flow is in the opposite direction. It goes from our cathode to our anode. So from this way all the way up to our anode. Now, in order to find the total resistance of our system, of our electric circuit, we have to once again look at two things. We have to look at Kirchhoff's first rule and we have to look at Ohm's law. Now according to Kirchhoff's first rule, the amount of current that flows into a node equals the amount of current that flows out of a node. Now note that in the same way that flow of liquid in a pipe will split when it comes to an intersection, current or the flow of electrons will also split when it comes to an intersection. Now, applying these two concepts, we get the following result. The current that goes into this node must equal the current that, that comes out of that node. So that means, because we have an intersection, our current will split into two different currents. I1 and I2. So I1 plus I2 equals I in or I total. So the total amount of current in our system is equal to the current that goes up and the current that comes down. So once again these two currents may or may not be the same. The magnitude of these currents depend on the resistance or the amount of R1 and R2. If R1 and R2 are equal then we'll see in a little bit that I1 and I2 also must be equal. But if R1 is larger than R2, that means our current 1 is smaller than our current I2. So, once again, whenever two resistors are placed in parallel to one another, across from one another, the current splits in the same way that liquid traveling in a pipe splits when it comes to an intersection. Now, the current, therefore, along these two resistors may or may not be the same. And we'll examine once again why in a little bit. Now notice the following result. The voltage, which is given by the following formula, voltage is equal to electric field times distance, is the same across both resistors. Why is that? Well, let's examine the following result. Notice that the electric field produced in this area is constant. It's the same. And notice that the distance between this guy and this guy is exactly the same for both cases. The distance does not change. And that means if E and D are the same, that means our voltage across both of these guys is identical. And in fact, our voltage across both of these guys is equal to our V total. So, we see that our current going here and here may or may not be the same but our voltage, V total, is the same across this guy and this guy. And the voltage is equal to V total. So, let's look at the following result. 
we said that the current that goes into this node, which is also the current total, or the total current is equal to the, the current that comes out of that same node. And this is according to conservation of charge, according to Kirchhoff's first rule. So we get the following equation. I in or I total is equal to I1 plus I2. Now let's apply Ohm's law. Ohm's law states that V equals IR. So if we rearrange the formula, we see that I equals V over R. So to get I in or I total, we simply say V total divided by R total equals I1 is simply V total be over R1. And that's because our V total, our voltage across this guy and this guy is exactly the same. So plus V total over R2. And now we can multiply out or divide through by V total and we get the following result. We get our 1 over R total is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So whenever we deal with resistors that are in parallel, the only way to find our total resistance of our system, assuming that all, all our resistors are in parallel, is to use the following formula. 1 over R total is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Now this formula is only for two resistors. If we had three resistors, four, five, six, and so on resistors, all in parallel, we simply change this formula to accommodate the fact that we have more resistors. So with three resistors, we'd see that 1 over R total is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3.